So every man that is coming from Adam, born by his mother, is a product of a species. And the name of that species is Adam. So the same ailment that Adam suffered, all of us carried it as a product of coming from him. We were identified fundamentally in Adam. It was that identification that made us to suffer. According to the book of Romans, he said, including them that did not sin after the similitude of Adam, died the same death. And the death reigned from Adam to Moses. By the time we came to Moses, people were reckoned according to the sin that they sin as a person. But the writer of the book of Romans in that chapter 5 is trying to say that before we sinned our own sin, the impact of sinning was already affecting us. And the impact of that sin was death. It means that even though we did not sin in ourselves, and the impact of sin is affecting us, then somebody sinned. Are you getting it? This cannot happen until there is a sinning and sin somewhere. Yes, you did not sin, but you are experiencing the impact of that sinning, meaning that somebody sinned. So because of the sinning of that person, huh, it affected you. Because of a law. And that law is how powerful is identification. You did not do anything. You did not know who did it. You have never met him. Just because you were extracted from him. The raw material with which you are made was gotten from him. Just that only. Huh? Just because your father gave birth to you, you started suffering what is in your foundation. You don't know when they are great. It's a law in the spirit. And the reason why it's a law is... The same matter is affecting everybody. And the scripture, the writer of the book of Romans and Corinthians is trying to propose a law and saying that if we were identified in Adam and his sin and ailment affected all of us, hmm, that, that that scenario, that experience is a law that is operating. That God took advantage of that same law in redemption. And then took us out of Adam and identified us in Christ. So instead of standing behind Adam, you didn't do anything. You are suffering for what you don't know. You stood up one day and you don't want to fornicate. Something is forcing you. You don't want to sin. You don't want to do anything. You just woke up. Did, did you begin for this weakness? If it was given for you, you would have been born a man that is resistant to sinning. That's what we wanted. But because you were extracted from Adam, things that you cannot stop, we are holding you. That's what Paul was crying about in the book of Romans. He said that the sin that I don't want to sin is holding me. The things I don't want to do, I'm doing it. The one I want to do, I can't do it. He said, oh wretched man that I am, who can save me? Then here comes Christ Jesus. He said, Whosoever believeth, those all things that we are counted, they are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Clap for Jesus in one minute. It's not, it's, it's a clap of a realization of what Jesus did. Uh, when you believe, you are no more in Adam. God created a new person. The person your mother gave birth to was nailed on the cross with Jesus. Eh? As long as that man is hanging there, why are you coming down? Eh? A new man has been created. And that new man is made in the image of the Holy One. The Bible spoke about it. He said, the new man in Christ, made after the similitude, the image of the one that is holy and righteous. That's what you are carrying. Eh? The new man cannot see him. The new man does not lie. It's a realization. Just as you didn't need to do anything to begin to know what it means to fornicate and lie and steal money, you did not need to do anything to know how to live holy. Pray in the spirit for one minute. Why is this revelation not entering me? Whether you believe it or not, it is true. Whether it's already happening in your life or not, it is true. And that's why you need to pray. The fault of your experience 
cannot, will not, will never be able to nullify the fact and truth of the word of God. Thirty more seconds. So far, Felian Tepa Combe, Sakata Papeleka, Ita Papina Campo, Ah, Ah, Sakapa Pampina Catas, Sita Papata Capapilate, Icampe, Aparato Sakatita, Ita Papana Capa. Sapatiam pala kapa, vele tepe. Sapata papoka, sapata papaku, Prayer is applicative. It means that you will not be able to apply what you just heard and knew if you don't pray. in Jesus you can be seated I want to show you a few more things I was discussing something important concerning this topic with my wife yesterday you need to give me 15 more minutes so that I can finish this thing Show me 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Now, you need to understand something, man of God. When Noah came out of the boat, he offered a sacrifice that was not reasonable. The reason why it's not reasonable is because this is a situation where everything that was living was swept away by the flood. It means that every other thing remaining should be precious and, and kept. Like we need to keep it in a museum. Only for the man to come out and take some of those animals and sacrifice it to God. That's, that's heavy. But something prompted him. The scripture said that he didn't just sacrifice animals. He sacrificed a kind of animals called clean animals. The question now is what are clean animals? You see, clean animals are those animals that the impact of the fall was not strong on them. Some of them, it was, it was almost non-evident. It means that they retained their original manual of operation. You know, we were teaching you yesterday. Mosquito is not supposed to bite, but he's biting you. But there are animals that retain to a great degree their original um, qualities. Are you getting the point? Those clean animals, the fall did not affect them. Huh? It is not just animals. There were human beings too. That we let her saw that the fall did not affect every individual human being the same way. Are you getting where I'm going? So, it seems as if some others are better people than others. Naturally. It means that the impact of the fall differed. So, the man that was offering the sacrifice was more like of this opinion. I don't know what made these people survive the impact of the fall to the extent that they were able to retain their natural capacities despite the fall of man. Because of that, I'm going to make them a sacrifice on this altar so that whatever that was in them that resisted the variability that came upon animals and creation as a result of the fall, did not, that variability did not impact them. They still retained their quality and character. Whatever made them consistent, 
Eh? Let God look upon that matter in this sacrifice and hold certain criteria consistent for me as I begin to live my journey upon the face of the earth. And when he offered them, true as the scripture told us, that God came and smelt it and he said that it is good and said that summer and winter, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. A few things he mentioned. So when God saw that the man offered something to hold things, God held six things consistent for him. Are you getting it? Meaning that there is a consistency in character that the fall did not affect. Even though man fell and true, everybody fell. But there are some people that retain their quality to a great degree. Are you following me? That same principle, Satan also turned it. So it means that even though man fell, man did not become totally, totally so bad and evil. What's wrong with that sister? What's wrong? Are you in this class? Are you getting what I'm saying? Man fell, but he's not so wicked that he can raise knife and kill the other. For man to be very, very wicked as he became, according to the scripture, it seems as if man began to learn the ways of evil. Man needed to be taught in evil to become good in evil. Now, there is a nature he received. Are you getting what I'm saying? He needed to be taught in that nature for him to maximize the potentials of that nature. That means even though man fell, he still retained to a great degree some goodness until he was taught in the new nature of wickedness and sin that he received. So as the day was progressing, he was becoming more and more wicked because it is not just that he had a nature, he is now being taught on the power and potentials of the new nature that he has, which is the nature of sin. In the same way, in righteousness, you need to be taught in righteousness. There are educations in righteousness. If not, the old nature that you have, which is that of sin, will be what will be predominantly manifest until somebody teaches you in righteousness. Then the powers of the new nature that you have in righteousness will supersede. Are you getting where I'm going? Until man was taught evil, his capacity to, for evil was low. In the same way, until you are taught righteousness, your capacity for life, your capacity for righteousness is low. Even though you have the nature. Are you getting where I'm going now? Look at this scripture. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable. One, for what? Doctrine. For reproof. For correction. But what I'm going for is that last phrase. Let's read it together. One, two, ready, go. Let's read it one more time. Again. Again, never forget it, underline it. That means there are instructions in righteousness. It is those instructions in righteousness that gives you the capacity to maximize the potential of the new nature that you received. What you received was free, but for you to maximize this potential, you have to be taught in it. Your capacity to receive teachings that came as a result of righteousness we determine how much we experience the potential of that life and nature. In other words, if somebody is weak in these instructions, though you have that nature, because you have run away from the teachings of righteousness, you will be weak in its potential. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. I want to read another scripture. Now, because of time, whenever you read the New Testament and you see in Christ, are you with me? Substitute, change it with the word identification. Am I correct? Or substitution? Let me check my notes. There are two words, in and with. There is in Christ. Then there is with Christ. I want to show you some things. Because... The Bible said, let me use a scripture. Ephesians chapter 2, let's start from verse 4. 
For, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Next verse. And had raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So in Christ is identification. Let me explain to you what it means. Identif Even though they look as if they are close, but they are not. Just a little difference. In something means that you are inside something. Is it not true? From what I just explained, this thing went too low. Just small. From what I just explained, when you are in something, it means that you are inside it. Hmm? So as you are inside it like this, God now said, this thing, go to the cross. Huh? So, when this thing is going to the cross, what is inside it is going with it. Is it not true? In, with. In, with. When Jesus was flogged, we were in him. And we are flogged with him. Follow me. When they spat on him, we were where? In him. And we are what? Spat on with him. When they made him naked, we were where? In him. Huh? And they flogged us together. Whether you believe it or not, that's your business. If you don't believe it, you will suffer till you die. There is no other way except for you to believe this thing I'm saying. There is no other way. Believe it first. Whether it makes sense. That's not your business. It's not your business to make sense to you. How did you get born again? Did it make sense? I, I receive, I receive. What's that? So you believe that you are, not, you are not believing this one. You are inside Jesus when they are flogging him. 49, they flogged you. Hmm? So we are in him and with him. When we went to that cross, when he went to that cross, we were where? Where were we? And we went there with him. What of when he hung there? We were where? In him. And we were what? With him. What of when he died? We, where, where were you? At, wait, wait. Wait, Victor, where were you? You are at uh, Kabez. Eh? Huh? Pastor, where are you? At Imo State. No. Tayo, where are you at Ibado? No. Where are you at Oboko? No. You were in him. And with him on that cross. Open my eyes. Let me see. Let me see. Listen, listen to me. When he died, where were you? You were in him. And with him, you also died. Listen. What of when he was buried? Where were you? With him, and we are buried together. What of when he rose? Where were you? You are with him. and how how many people rose? All of us. All of us rose. All of us rose. The scripture spoke about Jesus. He said, even death could not hold him. Why are you held? Why? 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 Satan, lose your grip. 
got a new soul group. The scripture says, We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. You are not sitting in Nigeria, you are sitting in heavenly places. It's your choice. Bro, it's your choice, sir. You can choose where to sit. Etika, where are you sitting? Where are you sitting? I am seated with Christ. I am seated. The day you see yourself there, Satan will fall. Just as Jesus said, I see Satan fall like light from heaven. I see him fall from your life. If only you can see this. Jesus name. Listen. Hmm. If you don't conquer sin, it means that Jesus died in vain. It means... You are not allowing the fullness and the import of his sacrifice to reach you. You are there. You are there. The only reason why sin survives is that you came out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When he died, the only reason why he died is to make sure that you will die too. Because if it was not for you, there is no reason. Why will he die? He doesn't need his death. You are the one that needs it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He doesn't need his death. The scripture says, Scarcely for a righteous man will any man die. Are you getting the point? That means Jesus is a righteous man. Him dying, he doesn't need his own death. You are the one that needed it. Are you getting the point? Only for him to die, and the reason why he died has not reached you. Satan is stealing you blind. He's a criminal. When Jesus was hanging on that cross, the scripture said, the sin of the, the sin was, sin was nailed on the cross. Sin. And you were inside Jesus. The sin that was nailed was not Jesus' sin because him did not sin. It was your own sin that was nailed there. Jesus went to the cross for you so that your sin will be nailed. Your anger was nailed on that cross. Your, you, and he's still there. Why he's still in your life is what we don't know. The anger that was nailed on the cross, how did he end up in your life? You better believe it. Don't, don't say but, but. There is no but. That's, the, that's what it is. It is your but, but that is keeping you in your weakness. Can you pray for one minute? Lord, make the experience of the cross my own experience. Make it my experience. Take it from the Bible and put it in my life.
Now for one more minute. We have not finished this topic. topic. If, if I pray and the Lord allows us, next week we continue. But if he moves, we will move with him. I think if God has not released you, you might need to pray for two more minutes before you go. You can cast your seed and offering. You are blessed. <laughs> 